All right, in this lesson, we are going to talk about deferred revenue and prepaid expenses. Now, uh, this is your formal introduction to the topic, although we have talked about it in the last couple of lessons when we talked about journal entries. Now, we are talking about it here because you do need to understand uh, these words here. We've got some more training and practice that you'll do in other sections, but because this, this is prominent in income statement transactions, we kind of have to teach it to you. So deferred revenue and prepaid expenses. So let's get started with these two topics. Now, what is a deferred revenue? A deferred revenue occurs when a payment occurs prior to the actual revenue occurring. So think of yourself as a company. You have a customer who pays you in advance of whatever you're supposed to do. That's called a deferred revenue. Normally when you receive cash, that would be a revenue, but because you haven't done anything for the money, you can't consider it revenue until you actually do something with it. Uh, sorry, uh, until you've done something for the customer. So you've performed a performance obligation. Well, if you haven't performed a performance obligation according to the contract, you don't have a revenue. So we still want to accept the cash, but we call it a deferred revenue. We're gonna defer the revenue until we actually perform that performance obligation. Now, prepaid expense is kind of on along the same lines, except you are now the customer rather than you are the uh, person providing the service or providing the product. So a prepaid expense occurs when a payment occurs prior to the actual expense occurring. So again, pretend you're the company and you want to uh, pay for something in advance, you're gonna pay for it, but because you haven't received anything, because you haven't been provided a service, an expense hasn't happened, therefore you don't have an expense yet. You just put some money up front. It's like buying a gift card. You buy a gift card, but the expense hasn't happened. The expense happens when you swipe the gift card, when you use the gift card. Now, if you buy it for someone else, that's a different story. But if you were to go buy a gift card, nothing has happened until you actually use that gift card. Kind of like a Starbucks gift card where you have to load it on your app and then you use the app to purchase. Um, you will use it, but the expense happens when you use it, not when you reload your app for Starbucks, okay? So uh, under both situations, cash occurs before the actual revenue or expense occurring. So the reason why we're talking about this in the same light is the cash is coming in before uh, the actual revenue or the expense that might be incurred. Now, under a deferred or prepaid situation, there are generally two transactions that occurs the transaction of the cash and the transaction of the deferral of either the revenue or the deferral of the prepaid uh, expense or the expense, okay? So uh, there's kind of this two things that have to happen, the receipt of the cash, the transaction for the cash, and then the actual expense or revenue that must occur. And so when we do journal entries related to deferrals and prepaids, we're gonna have two sets of entries the entry for the cash, but then the entry for the actual booking of the revenue or the expense. So for a deferred revenue, or a deferred revenue occurs when a payment is uh, occurs prior to the actual revenue occurring. So when a payment is received, so we said there's a payment received and then the actual revenue or the expense. So let's talk about the payment received. So on the payment received, typically the journal entry is gonna look something like this. We're gonna debit cash for whatever amount and we're gonna credit the deferred revenue account or you might hear it called the unearned revenue. They are the same type of an account. Some people like deferred, some people like unearned. We're gonna use deferred revenue for now. So credit the deferred revenue for whatever that amount is. Now, deferred revenue, unearned revenue, those are liability accounts. If I can spell, okay? So that's a liability account. Uh, so we're gonna debit the asset, credit a liability because we haven't provided the service. If we don't provide the service, we have to pay back the customer. 
All right, so when the goods and services are provided, so once the goods and services are provided, we are going to debit the deferred revenue or the unearned revenue for that same amount, and we're gonna credit the actual revenue. So basically, the way that I like to think about this is I'm moving the imaginary money from deferred revenue to revenue, okay? That's the way that I think about it. I'm moving it from one place to another, okay? So here's an example. Uh, Walnut Creek engages a client who is going to use their facility as a commercial shoot. The client pays Walnut Creek $3,000 on April 15th in advance of their shooting that will occur next month. Uh, the client shoots a commercial on May 12th. So what would the journal entry be? For the payment of the cash as well as the providing of the service. So let's start with the cash. So the cash here, I receive cash. If I'm receiving cash, I'm receiving an asset that's increasing my asset, so we're going to debit cash. So I'm gonna debit cash here in the amount of $3,000, and then I'm gonna credit the, not revenue, but we're gonna credit the deferred revenue. So deferred revenue for $3,000. So that's what happens when we receive the cash. Notice we haven't booked the revenue because we haven't provided the service. Now on May 12th, when the couple uses the, or when uh, a client engages on the customer shoot, then we have earned the money. So we have to move it from deferred revenue to revenue. So to take it out of deferred revenue, we credit it to put it in. To take it out, we do the opposite. So the opposite of a credit would be a debit. So to take it out, we're gonna debit deferred revenue for $3,000. And then we're going to credit the actual revenue. Now we can book the revenue. So we're exchanging the deferred for the actual revenue. So I'm gonna credit service revenue for $3,000. So that's the entry that would happen for a deferred revenue. Receipt of the cash, and the actual revenue. Receipt of the cash, uh, we book a liability, and then we overturn that liability, and we book that revenue as that second entry. All right, moving to on to the prepaid expenses. So prepaid expenses work just like deferred revenue. We just are gonna use different accounts at the end of the day. So a prepaid expense occurs when a payment occurs prior to the actual expense happening. So when the payment is made, so when I, the company, makes the payment to Starbucks, for instance, um, cash is going out, so we're gonna credit cash, and then we're gonna debit some type of prepaid account. So for instance, it might be prepaid rent, it may be prepaid insurance, it may be prepaid coffee, it may be prepaid supplies, it may be prepaid, whatever it is, it's prepaid, okay? So most often you're gonna see prepaid insurance and prepaid rent. We don't usually call prepaid supplies prepaid supplies, we just call it supplies, okay? And then the cash outflow, credit cash, okay? Now, once we've incurred the expense, so once the expense happens, we gotta take it out of the prepaid and move it to the expense, okay? So we're gonna take it out of prepaid because we no longer have that amount left and we're gonna move it to the actual expense. So uh, we're gonna get a journal entry that looks something like this. We're gonna debit whatever expense it is. So it might be rent expense, it might be insurance expense, um, it could be supplies expense. So we're gonna debit the expense and then we're gonna credit the prepaid. So we're moving it from the expense to the prepaid. Now the reason that there are lines there is because we actually do try to pinpoint exactly what the prepaid is for and what the expense is actually for. So you're gonna have a line, it's up to you to put whatever it is in that line and then expense or prepaid. All right, so let's look at an example here. We've got Walnut Creek again, who has an event insurance policy as a barrier against potential lawsuits from customers using the venue. On April 1st, Walmart Creek pays uh, for three months of insurance. The total insurance bill is $1,500 and covers April through June. On April 30th, one month of insurance has expired, which is basically 500 bucks. Now we'll get to this a little bit later, but basically, you know, if this is a time-based expense, right? So if it's a time-based expense, 
$1,500 over three months. Well, the expectation is, is that each month is costing us $500. So we're going to expense it in the period that it incurs. And typically we close the books every month. And so we want to allocate that $1,500 by month. And so in this case, $1,500 divided by three is 500, $500 a month makes sense. Okay. So uh, when the payment is made, so when the payment is made, we know that cash goes out. So cash goes out. That's going to be a credit. And then what are we getting in return? Well, we're not getting insurance expense because time has not passed. And remember, we said that we take expenses and we allocate it to the period in which they incur. Uh, so we are going to prepay our insurance expense. So I'm going to debit prepay insurance expense for $1,500 and we're going to credit cash for $1,500. So that's what would be our prepaid expense entry. Then the expense happens. So a month goes by. We now need to expense a third of it, $500 of it. So what do we do? We're going to reverse the prepay and we're going to book it to the expense. We're going to take it out of the prepaid account put it in the expense account because we no longer have it. We've used it, so we need to reflect it. So uh, because prepaid, we debited to go in. To go out, we're going to credit it. So we're going to credit prepaid insurance expense for $500. And we're going to debit the actual expense. So in this case, insurance expense. So insurance expense for five hundred dollars the next month we'll do the same thing and the next month we'll do the same thing when it comes to this bottom entry and then when we pay another three months we'll do the top entry okay so that's how we take care of a prepaid expense the cash the top entry and then the expense the bottom entry Okay, so that is a look of deferred revenue and prepaid expense. Like I said, some of this you already know because we talked about in the last couple of lessons when we did the journal entries, we just didn't formally show you them. But now we formally showed you, generally speaking, a lot of the revenues and expense type transactions is going to be in this form, deferred revenue and prepaid expenses. We also have some other ones that I'm going to show you in a minute in the next lesson, uh, but these are about half of the entries that you might incur where the cash comes in before the actual revenue and expense occurs. And so we have to deal with it in two ways. First, the cash and then the actual revenue and expense. They are not necessarily uh, done at the same time, but they are related. Cash might come in at one period, the actual revenue and expense happens in a different period. So we kind of need to know that as we do these entries. Now, from a assignment standpoint, it might be, you know, you'll do part one, which is receive the cash now. And then later down the line, you'll actually have to do the expense or the revenue entry. So you kind of have to keep track of this as you're going along. Now, Today, modern days, we have softwares that does that for us, that helps us track that. But we still need to know that when we receive cash, we can't book that into revenue. We got to hold it off until the revenue actually happens. If we pay someone cash, uh, but we haven't gotten our services or gotten the product that we were supposed to, then we're not going to book the expense until actually uh, we receive it or we or receive we receive the product or we receive the actual service. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you wanna help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.